Reliance Standard Life Insurance Company is a very large group disability and life insurance company. They usually only sell group policies, which means that if you have a policy that's from Reliance Standard, that means you got it as a benefit from your employer or you got it through an association. In preparation for today to discuss a little bit about Reliance Standard, we wanted to take a look at the revenues of the company to see how much they really do each year with regard to sales for group insurance products. And according to the data that we could find, they do over a billion dollars a year in premiums collected for both life insurance and long-term and short-term disability insurance products. So there seems to be a, I would say, an average amount of litigation, which means denied cases out there for Reliance Standard as compared to other companies. They're definitely not in our top five worst companies, and they're probably more of a middle of the road company when it comes to evaluating claims and making decisions to either approve or deny benefits. And um, we've represented numerous clients that have Reliance Standard and we wanted to discuss a most recent case and something that a lot of people who have these Reliance Standard policies should be aware of because they have one of the most restrictive definitions of disability after the own occupation period. So I'm joined today by one of my law partners, Cesar Gavidia, and he's going to discuss the own occupation definition in a Reliance Standard policy versus the any occupation definition that we commonly see in most of the Reliance Standard policies. Yeah, uh, thanks, Greg. Uh, we're going to talk about that in the context of uh, the Janice McKeldin versus Reliance Standard case out of Maryland. Now, Miss McKeldin was a registered nurse and nurse case manager for a doctor's office, and she'd become disabled uh, due to fibromyalgia, deep vein thrombosis in her left leg, and uh, also chronic fatigue syndrome. So she had a lot of difficulties uh, standing, walking, bending, climbing for period, you know, for climbing and basically sitting and, and things like that for periods of time. Um, and she filed her claim for disability benefits with uh, Reliance Standard. She had, like most people out there, you said that they have a big presence in group disability. She was offered these benefits through her employer. And uh, she, for the first 36 months, was, had met the definition of total disability, which was unable to perform the substantial material duties of her occupation as an RN. But what she didn't realize was that definition after 36 months changed to a very restrictive definition. Um, and at first she saw it and her, her lawyer saw it as a very liberal definition of unable to perform uh, every, each and every duty of any occupation. So they, they figured, well, if she can't perform just even just one duty of any gainful occupation, then she'd be totally disabled. Well, um, of course, that's how they proceeded with their claims and with their, you know, their, her claim was eventually, was ultimately denied. They appealed it and they proceeded on that same theory and they continued, Reliance Standard continued, continued denying her claim. Now, they ultimately had to bring a lawsuit in federal court over this since it was governed by ERISA. And uh, the U.S. District Court in Maryland uh, found that if they looked at and analyzed that definition by itself, um, and isolated, you know, the any gainful occupation definition that, yeah, it could be seen or read in more than just one way. It could mean that if she was unable to perform just one um, occupational duty of uh, any gainful occupation, then she was totally disabled. Or it could mean that she had to be uh, able to perform every, you know, every one of them, um, unable to perform every one of them, those uh, substantial material duties. Uh, the court then also looked at the partial disability definition. They said in reading everything as a whole, because partial disability definition, the partial disability definition basically would allow her to continue receiving benefits if she was not able to work full time, was working part time, or was not able to do as many of the duties as she did before. Um, so in reading the policy as a whole and in, in, in complete context, they found that, in fact, that more restrictive definition is what applied. And several circuits, the Fourth Circuit uh, and the Sixth Circuit, have also found the same thing with the same exact Reliance Standard policy. So that's what people need to be aware of out there and be, and be basically beware of this 36-month 
occupational change in their in their uh, total disability defini definition. And you said she had partial disability definition in her policy? She did, yeah, for the first 36 months. Okay, was she, all, she was also approved for Social Security Disability. Yes. So had she possibly after the three-year mark or sometime close to that been doing some sort of other job and had a loss of income, then she may have been eligible to get paid under the partial disability provision of the policy. Uh, potentially. Potentially, but the way that that partial disability definition came up, it almost applied. It seemed like it almost applied to just the first 36 months, and after 36 months, basically, if you were unless you were unable to do absolutely anything, you know, you wouldn't you would would not qualify for disability benefits. Right, and being able to do each and every duty that seems far more restrictive than, and that's each and every duty of right. any occupation. And, and they gave examples that she could drive that she could um, you know, use her arms and her hands, that she could walk a little bit, um, that she could read. They actually said that because she could read, she, that was still a material duty of a gainful occupation. So uh, what, you know, to what extent does someone have to be disabled? Do they have to be completely unconscious in order to collect disability, be uh, disability benefits under this type of definition? Right. I mean, that, it's, it's just kind of, um, I think, not what people expect and what they you know bargain for when they when they when they go into these parts. Right, I think that's that's the issue we deal with every day when representing these claimants is we want to you know if they can't work and can't do any job how are we going to keep them on claim and prove to the disability insurance company that they're unable to do any work. And we know from having cases and seeing the case law Reliance Standard really digs in when when you have a claim denied and they'll really want to litigate and take you the distance on cases. And we know from cases that have gone up to the Court of Appeals below the United States Supreme Court, and we know of the most recent case that went to the United States Supreme Court, which was the Hart versus Reliance Standard, where um, Reliance Standard was taken to court on a claim. They basically lost the claim because the claim was remanded, meaning sent back to Reliance to review again because the court felt they didn't review the claim appropriately. And Reliance was fighting on an, a, an attorney fee issue where even after the claimant had their claim remanded, Reliance said, no, that's not a victory. You didn't win the court because there was no benefits awarded. So that claim didn't have, there was no win by the plaintiff. Mm -hmm. So you're not entitled to attorney's fees. And that went to the United States Supreme Court that only takes about 150 cases a year. And the United States Supreme Court rewrote basically the laws for what it, what's required in order for an attorney to get paid on an ERISA claim, which makes it obviously better for the disability claimant because if the disability claimant has got to pay their attorney for the entire claim, then basically the attorney's fees in a lot of cases could wipe out the amount of benefits that are payable. And fortunately, the United States Supreme Court came back and found made some findings in favor of the claimant to make it a little bit more liberal for claimants to be able to have their attorney's fees paid for by the insurance company. Yeah, and, that, and that's certainly a, a victory because there has to be some disincentive for these companies because if they don't see that they could potentially have to pay attorney's fees or if they don't see that there could be damages just outside of paying benefits on these policies, there's really no incentive for them to even really pay the claims. Right. They would just deny it and just say, if we lose, then we'll pay you the back benefits. And they can certainly afford with you know billions of dollars in revenues, and especially a billion dollars in just disability, they can afford to pay their attorneys all day long and right. deny claims. So if you have a Reliance Standard disability claim, or if your claim has been denied, or you're considering filing, or you're on claim, and you have general questions about anything related to Reliance Standard, feel free to call us at your convenience and we'll be happy to set an appointment to discuss your claim.